In 2003, Swedish philosopher Nick Bostrom introduced a fascinating concept. The idea that the entire universe, encompassing all that exists within it, might be nothing more than a simulation. At the core of this idea is the notion that our reality, from the vast cosmos down to our planet and its inhabitants, may not be authentic, but instead a computer-generated simulation or virtual creation crafted by an exceptionally advanced civilization or entity. This sophisticated simulator could be a future iteration of humanity or even an extraterrestrial society. The roots of this hypothesis can be traced back to the age-old philosophical inquiry, with thinkers like René Descartes pondering the possibility of a deceitful malevolent force or deity manipulating our perception of the world. This concept often ties in with the idea that as technology advances, humans may eventually gain the capability to craft highly realistic virtual simulations. Therefore, it's conceivable that our current reality might itself be a creation of a more advanced being if future humans can create such simulations. Supporters of the simulation hypothesis present several arguments in its favour. One crucial point they make is the rapid advancement in computer simulations, virtual realities and artificial intelligence as technology progresses. This trajectory suggests that the development of highly sophisticated simulations is well within the realms of possibility. Furthermore, proponents argue that certain peculiarities or anomalies in the laws of physics and cosmology, such as finely tuned constants and unexplained phenomena, could potentially find an explanation within the context of a simulated reality. Since the inception of this hypothesis, it has sparked vigorous speculation and spirited debates regarding the very essence of reality. Renowned physicist John Wheeler, who collaborated closely with Albert Einstein, famously observed the evolution of physics transitioning from the initial premise that everything is a particle to the groundbreaking notion that everything is information. David Bohm eloquently articulated the concept that our perception of reality is intricately interwoven with our beliefs, thoughts and observations. He astutely remarked, reality is what we accept as true. What we accept as true is a reflection of our beliefs, which in turn are shaped by our perceptions. Our perceptions are influenced by what we seek. What we seek is guided by our thoughts. Our thoughts in turn are influenced by our perceptions. This dynamic relationship between perception, belief and truth shapes our reality. The enigmatic entrepreneur Elon Musk has famously proposed that the odds of us not existing within a simulated reality are astoundingly low, estimating it as one chance in billions, although the basis for this calculation remains unclear. In 2017, a pair of physicists authored an article unveiling a captivating insight. The computational approach known as Quantum Monte Carlo, initially devised for simulating quantum particles, had the potential to simulate a quantum computer. Their argument rests on the notion that even the mere storage of data pertaining to a few hundred electrons would necessitate an exorbitant amount of computer memory, surpassing the total number of atoms in the entire universe. Nonetheless, this proposition assumes that the advanced civilization responsible for simulating our existence would employ this specific technique, which, given their advanced state, might be unlikely. A more advanced civilization could utilize data compression algorithms, leading to an intriguing question, could such algorithms leave detectable traces that we might uncover? In a recent scientific endeavor, researchers claim to have successfully identified a new physical law that appears to reveal a concealed mechanism reminiscent of an exceptionally intricate computing system. Let's dive in and find out more. The second law of thermodynamics primarily deals with heat and energy transformations, asserting that the entropy of any system will either stay the same or increase as time progresses. This phenomenon results in a universe where everything tends towards a state of disorder, famously referred to as the arrow of time. Recent research is shedding new light on these principles and the universe's evolution, with a specific focus on physical systems that involve information states and their change over time. The investigation conducted by the researchers has given rise to a completely new physical law. 
Through their observations, they have introduced what they term the second law of information dynamics, a concept rooted in ideas dating back to the 1940s. By using two distinct information systems, a digital storage and a biological RNA genome, they've shown that this second law of information dynamics dictates that the information entropy must either remain constant or decrease over time. This concept contrasts with the evolution of physical entropy governed by the second law of thermodynamics and the enigmatic arrow of time. To illustrate, think of a glass box with a partition separating a cloud of red and blue smoke. When the partition is removed, the two plumes of smoke inevitably start to mix. There is no inherent process that can spontaneously separate these two smokes. It requires an input energy to reduce their entropy and return them to their initial organized state. Initially, the researchers expected that information entropy would adhere to the principle of the second law of thermodynamics. They theorized that the apparent contradiction between these two fundamental physical laws might underlie the mechanism driving genetic mutations in biological organisms and potentially a wide range of other phenomena within our universe. Initially, their research was all about understanding where genetic mutations come from. Genetic information, which is crucial for how living things work, is stored in DNA and RNA. The changes in the order of the building blocks of DNA and RNA, called nucleotides, are closely tied to how genetic information gets disorganized, which we call entropy. These changes, called genetic mutations, can happen in three ways. Single nucleotide changes, where the number of nucleotides stays the same. Deletions, where you lose some nucleotides. And insertions, where you add more nucleotides. They examine mutations in COVID-19 viruses as part of their research. Surprisingly, their findings revealed a clear link between information and how genetic mutations happened. They noticed that as the number of mutations increased over time, information entropy consistently decreased in a linear way. In essence, genetic information became more efficiently stored through successive mutations. These findings suggest a potential governing mechanism behind genetic mutations. This challenges the conventional notion that genetic mutations are entirely random events, thus opening the possibility of developing predictive algorithms for genetic mutations before their occurrence, in stark contrast to the classical Darwinian view. At its core, physical reality is constructed from discrete units of information, giving rise to our understanding of space-time. In contrast, temperature emerges from the combined movement of atoms, and a single atom doesn't possess an inherent temperature. This thought-provoking concept opens up the remarkable idea that our entire universe might be a computer simulation. Inspired by this intriguing notion, the researchers set out to explore whether their newly developed law could provide backing for this contentious concept. In their research, they delved into the behavior of electrons within multi-electron atoms. This exploration yielded crucial insights into various phenomena in the field of atomic physics. Electronic states within atoms are comprehensively defined by four quantum numbers. The principal quantum number, which determines the energy level of a specific electron shell or orbit. The orbital angular momentum quantum number, describing the subshell and quantifying an electron's total angular momentum due to its orbital motion. The magnetic quantum number, governing the component of the orbital angular momentum along a particular direction, typically in the context of an applied magnetic field. And the spin quantum number, which relates to an electron's inherent spin property. These electrons occupy atomic shells according to Pauli's exclusion principle, which states that within a quantum system, two or more identical fermions cannot occupy the same quantum state simultaneously. In the context of electrons within atoms, this principle dictates that two electrons in a multi-electron atom cannot have identical values for the four quantum numbers mentioned before. In 1927, German physicist Friedrich Hundt established a set of rules, one of which is famously known as Hunt's Rule of Maximum Multiplicity. This rule is useful for predicting the ground state of an atom or molecule with one or more open electronic shells. It states that the atomic state with the lowest energy 
is the only one that maximizes the total spin quantum number. Put simply, it means that the subshell orbitals should be initially occupied by electrons one at a time with parallel spins before they pair up. As a result, the term with the lowest energy also has the highest number of unpaired electrons. This rule is based on empirical observations, and the exact reasons why electrons occupy atomical orbits in this manner are not entirely clear. Two distinct explanations have been proposed, both focusing on the energetic interactions of electrons with atoms. The first explanation suggests that electrons in different orbitals are further apart, reducing the energy associated with electron-electron repulsion. The second explanation argues that singly occupied orbitals are less effective at shielding electrons from the nucleus, causing the orbitals to contract and increasing the electron-nucleus attraction energy. The researchers revisited Hund's rule and examined it from the perspective of information theory. They revealed that Hund's rule is a direct outcome of the second law of information dynamics. This law dictates that, at equilibrium in ground state, electrons should fill orbitals in a way that minimizes their information entropy, or in other words, minimizes the amount of bit information associated with each electron. Their findings undeniably indicate that in all scenarios, the lowest information entropy values correspond to the highest possible spin quantum value. This raises the intriguing possibility that the second law of information dynamics might be the fundamental driving force behind Hund's rule. Symmetry principles hold a prominent place within the framework of natural laws. They extend beyond abstract mathematical concept, acting as a unifying element linking mathematics, chemistry, biology and physics. Symmetry appears to be an intrinsic and fundamental characteristic of the universe. However, a compelling question lingers. Why does symmetry appear to prevail in most systems across the universe rather than asymmetry? Despite the universe's tendency towards increased entropy and disorder, nature frequently exhibits a strong preference for high symmetry and heightened order. From the intricate symmetry of snowflakes to the fundamental symmetries governing the subatomic realm, symmetry manifests at various scales and plays a pivotal role in our understanding of the universe. Until recently, a comprehensive explanation for this phenomena remained elusive. In their paper, the authors aim to shed light on this enigma by proposing that high symmetry aligns with a state of lowest information entropy. This insight offers a potential explanation for nature's inclination towards symmetry. They argued that this revelation underscores the idea that symmetries observed throughout nature, spanning the entire breadth of the universe, arise as a consequence of the second law of information dynamics. This law mandates the minimization of information entropy in any system or process within the universe. Does this truly suggest that we exist within a simulated reality? While their analysis raises intriguing questions, it is somewhat surprising that they swiftly conclude it provides evidence for a simulation. Let's contemplate the scenario where we are constructing a simulation of the entire universe. What will be its most critical aspects? Well, that would partly depend on the simulation's purpose. At its core, the simulation would need to adhere to fundamental laws governing particle interactions and the behaviours that give rise to complex systems, including us humans. These rules must be rooted in the real world outside the simulation. Therefore, it's questionable whether we would encounter evidence of compression algorithms within these rules. Consider the example of electron cells, a fundamental concept for modelling the rest of the universe. If we were to alter their behaviour, atoms, molecules and complex life forms could not exist. So if this is a simulation, it must be based on real-world rules. Hence, it seems improbable to observe any form of compression. The same reasoning applies to symmetries found in nature. It's unclear why one would compromise the simulation's fidelity to reduce data if it meant departing from reality. A more prominent question then is why, if the second law of information dynamics holds, do we witness systems organising themselves into states with minimal data? If the second law of thermodynamics tells us that systems tend to disorder, yet we observe systems striving for the lowest data state, does this not suggest a hierarchical system 
and an energy flow. Energy must be conserved and can only be transformed into other forms, eventually spreading out over time. When you introduce additional energy, you can bring order to a system. Does the second law of infodynamics in fact challenge our current understanding of the universe? Living organisms undergo mutations due to an input of energy. The observation that their analysis suggests more efficient data storage within each mutation is remarkable, but we must acknowledge that these living systems directly receive energy. What about the recurring fractal patterns found in nature across all scales? Previously, we explored the fractal similarities that seem to appear at various scales. If we consider the structured atomic model, we can identify a natural structure emerging from a set of geometric rules. So in a sense, it's not surprising to observe this pattern repeating on progressively larger scales. The assumption also rests on the notion that the second law of thermodynamics applies to the entire universe. However, even in the standard model where dark energy accelerates the universe, the concept of a fixed amount of energy is not straightforward. Does this research hint at the idea that we live in a vastly intricate system of which the observable universe is just a small part. If you found this video enjoyable, please consider giving it a like and subscribing if you're new to the channel. A huge thanks to all those who continue to support this channel. If you're interested in contributing, relevant links are provided in the description below. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.